I thought today was supposed to be my day off. You know exactly who this is, Chris. Your mum? Chris! You're the real monster! Good morning everyone and welcome back to Journey Across Japan. We are currently in Kyoto Station in Kyoto City and uh, today is my day off and for the next three days as we travel across Kansai region, Kyoto, Osaka and Kobe, we're just going to be relaxing and taking it easy. Joining me on this leg of the trip is our third guest, Mr Pete Donaldson. Hello. Top London radio DJ, certified Japanophile and dare I say, friend. Why have you got me up so early, Chris? Because we're going to have a great, fun-filled day. Pete is currently on holiday, so I thought I'd let him decide what we do today. Um, we've got loads of temples, we've got shrines, pagodas, all sorts of things in Kyoto, obviously, given it is an ancient capital. So with that in mind, Pete, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? I want to go to the monkey park. Pete, we're not going to a monkey park. Bums are so pink, Chris. I love them so much. Not just about the bums, I really like the monkeys as well. I like the bums and the monkeys, but mainly the monkeys. Look at them, they're so big and hunky. It sounds like I fancy monkeys, I don't fancy monkeys. Or maybe that one. This park was originally a university outpost used to study monkeys about 60 years ago, and then things got a little bit out of control. The monkeys took over, the tourists turned up, and now it's one of Kyoto's biggest tourist attractions. Accessible by a 25-minute hike up the mountains of Urashiyama, the Watayama Monkey Park is home to over 120 snow monkeys, or Japanese macaques, a species native to Japan who can be found freely roaming mountain ranges across the country. Perhaps most famously in Nagano, where you can watch on in envy as the monkeys laze around in steaming hot springs. Thankfully, the only cage at Watayama Monkey Park is the one for humans, where you can stand inside whilst feeding the monkeys. Despite the many ominous signs on the climb up warning you not to look into their eyes or crouch down beside them, the monkeys seem fairly undaunted by their human visitors, scurrying in between the legs of tourists as they go about their day. In fact, the only time they seem to acknowledge your presence is after purchasing some monkey snacks, in which case you'll quickly become the object of their affections. I've named all the monkeys. Um, that one's uh, Franklin. That one there's Franklin. Uh, that one there's also got Franklin. Why Franklin? Two, li two little baby Franklins over there, and a third there, Franklin. Um, they're all called Franklin, because uh, I have very little imagination. I love the name Franklin, though. <laughs> monkeys. I know what you're going to name your firstborn son. Marmaduke. I thought the monkeys might be in cages or something, but they're actually just roaming free on the side of the mountain. So not only do you have a beautiful view of Kyoto, one of the best views you can have of the whole city, but you've got loads of monkeys around you as well. What more could you want? Food. We could have some food up here, that'd make it better. I once had a banana stolen from me by a Japanese macaque. Really? Would you believe it? I had it in my back pocket. How was I to know that monkeys loved bananas? <laughs> it's, not like, well, it's not like we're ever told that, is it? That's right. What I will say is Pete used to work at a monkey zoo. I did used to work at a monkey zoo. We had the finest collection of primates in the whole of Europe. Particularly uh, gibbons. Particularly gibbons. I mean, they're not <laughs> that monkeys. Could be the name of your like, particularly indie, gibbons. indie band. Particularly, <laughs> <laughs> particularly gibbons. Pete's I, new 80s rock band. Reasons why I love gibbons more than monkeys. Long arms. That's it. Monkeys need longer arms. Let's why? stretch the monkeys. Come on. Come well, on what's the benefit of having a long arm? To reach my bananas from my back pocket. See that, Chris? Yep. Maybe uh, we're the real monkeys. We're a slave to the man. We're the real monkeys in cages of our own creation. I beg your pardon. All right, Pete, we need to get the, uh, need to get the money shot of us mm. sitting with loads of monkeys. All right, okay. What's the secret? As somebody who's worked with monkeys, what's the secret to like befriending them and getting them on your side? Um, well, first you have to appeal to their um, sense of uh, fair play. So you must play them all at tennis. Um, rounders and also a game of uh, snooker as well before you, they trust you so uh, we need to um, get them into a pool hall that's that's the first thing I thought about putting my GoPro on the ground and getting like a point of view shot but then I suspect the monkeys would just grab it and just take it and that'd be it just glue onto the monkey you can get a monkey glue a you. GoPro to a monkey <laughs> it sounds worse when you say it like that it just sounds worse in general get the glue 
Well, Mr. Donaldson, we turned dream into reality. We brought you to the monkey park. What do you want to do now? We've got lots of beautiful temples in this area. There's the rock garden as well, if you want to check out the shrines, the Inari, the Inari Tori gates. Yeah, or we could go to Monster Street. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're now on Yorkai Street, quite literally Monster Street. Um, it's a fairly unremarkable looking road until you get to the front of each shop and you find a disturbing little creature or monster. Some of them come from traditional Japanese folklore, others are just dreamt up by the somewhat disturbed shopkeepers perhaps. Right, there's millions of these things down the street. This one is easily the best one. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> it's got eyebrows and a little baby and the little baby's got the same eyebrows so there's no doubt as to the father <laughs> or mother. <laughs> In Japanese folklore, yokai, meaning ghosts or monsters, are feared and revered, often exploited and used to scare children into doing chores. Very clever, if you ask me. Legend has it that Yokai Street has its origins rooted in a Japanese ritual known as Susu Harai, an annual end of year house cleaning ceremony where people clean out their homes and throw away old, unused, unwanted items. The story goes that over a thousand years ago, the unwanted and discarded household items, displeased at being thrown out and left at the side of the road, decided to fight back, coming to life as monsters and marching through the streets of Kyoto, terrorising the locals. Thankfully, with the intervention of Buddhist priests, the yokai saw the error of their ways and stopped haunting the locals. And to celebrate the plight of unloved discarded items, the shopkeepers today remember them with their own creation. So the next time you throw out your unwanted, unloved broomstick, spare a thought for it. Otherwise, it might come to life and destroy you and all those you hold dear. We've come to Kyoto, this ancient, beautiful city, and you want to look at monkeys and monsters. You offered me shrines, you offered me temples. And I want monsters. I want monkeys. All the M's. What better way to discover all the monsters on the street and get to know Pete Donaldson than by going up to each monster, having Pete stare it in the face and say the one word that springs to mind, the one thing that runs through his mind. Dad. Cat dad. Yeah, it's a guy I know called Stuart. Who's Stuart? Dad. It's bread dad. You know exactly who this is, Chris. Your mum? It's dad again. <laughs> well, if Monster Street has taught me anything, it's that Pete Donaldson has some uh, potential family issues. We're now going to go and make our own designs, though, guys. We're going to go to Family Mart, buy some crap, stick it together, and see who can make the best monster. And you're going to vote and decide in the comments section. Isn't that exciting, Pete? I'm going to upset you with the things in my brain. <laughs> Well guys, Pete and I bought a load of crap from Family Mart, spent the last 10-15 minutes putting it together, and this is the result. That is genuinely terrifying. I've seen this idea in my nightmares. What's, what? what? Are these your actual hands? Yeah. I did notice that Family Mart had a photocopier, so I photocopied my own hands for a realistic skin effect. Fish flakes for hair, genuinely stinky, and some, um, 
some uh, cheese, some hammy sort of cheese for the smoked, eye. Smoked cheese. Smoked cheese. Oh god. <laughs> and some delicious meat for the mouth, for that meaty, salty flavour when you fancy a little kiss. I've got bubble gum for a hat, pocky chocolate biscuits for hair, and uh, bubble gum for a tongue. And these fork, these forks here mean that uh, my creation, Mr. Chocolate Face, can actually stand up. Look at that. Oh. That is pretty cool. Which one do you think is the best, guys? I hope you haven't been too disturbed by our creations. Which one's best? Pete's, whatever that is, or my nice chocolate biscuit bubblegum one? Let us know in the comments. Let us know who's the winner. Well, guys, thanks for joining us on our disturbing trip to Kyoto. No matter where you might be out there in the big wide world, be sure to tune in and join us tomorrow. But for now, we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye. Bye. Chris! You're the real monster. Hi! <laughs> Hi! Hi guys! Hello! Hello! Peter. Thank you. Peter. To sort of say yes, yes. In, my, in my accent. Why I man? 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 They do move in herds. <laughs> He's 37 years old, ladies and gentlemen.